Armando has to biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe. Join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando has In this video, we're going to look at node-like receptors as well as the inflammasome, which are important complexes and receptors uh, that help protect our body. Now, just to differentiate, we, we have toll-like receptors, which are also important receptors in initiating the immune response and protecting our body. Toll-like receptors are membrane-bound receptors, so they are bound to the uh, plasma membrane. But node-like receptors, which this video is going to focus on, are different. Node-like receptors are cy cytosolic receptors, so they're found within the cytoplasm of the cell. And they also are the receptors involved in forming inflammasome, inflammasomes, which are uh, protein complexes that ex just amplify the immune response as well as induce apoptosis. So let's have a look at node-like receptors found within the cell. The human genome actually encodes for uh, 23 node-like receptor proteins, broadly divided into two categories. The first is that you have node-like receptors with a pyrene domain, so NLRP. And then you have node-like receptors with a caspase recruitment domain, so NLRC. We are only going to talk about three node-like receptors. Now, as I mentioned, node-like receptors are cytosolic proteins, and they're found within the cytoplasm um, as monomers. And as monomers, they are inactive. So here we can find node-like receptor P1, which means that it has a pyrene domain. Then we have node-like receptor C4, which means that it has a caspase recruitment domain. And then you have node-like receptor P3, which means it has a pyrene domain. So these node-like receptors, they have some common structural features, right? So they contain leucine-rich repeats, NACHT, as well as this one in particular has a pyrene domain because it has a P in it. In this video, we will actually mostly focus on a node-like receptor P3 because it is the best studied one out of all the node-like receptors. It also has a pyrene domain because it contains a P within it and a NACCHT region and a leucine rich repeat. Now node like receptor P3 are found as monomers in an inactive form like all other node like receptors. Now it's inactive because the leucine rich repeat are blocked by some chaperone proteins. But there are many things that can actually activate node like receptor P3. It's not fully understood how, though. Regardless, when it is activated, node-like receptor P3 will bind with other proteins known as adapter protein ASC, made up of a pyrene domain and a card domain. This process of binding to each other is known as ol oligomerization. So the pyrene domain of the adapter protein will actually bind to the pyrene domain of the node-like receptor P3, forming this type of structure. So they're, they're oligomerizing, you can say. Now, using its card domain, a, the adapter protein ASC brings protein monomers of procaspase 1 into close proximity. This structure now can be referred to as an inflammasome, or more correctly, the node-like receptor P3 inflammasome. The node-like receptor P3 inflammasome essentially initiates a caspase 1 self-cleavage and the formation of the active heterotetrameric caspase 1. So the inflammasome results in many active caspase 1. Caspase 1 has many functions. First of all, the active caspase 1 can pre uh, 
proteolytically activate a number of proteins, including pro-interleukin 1b and pro-interleukin 18. And it will also induce their release, which will, be, which will sub subsequently amplify the immune response. Under certain conditions, activa activation of the inflammasome will lead to cell death. Um, the word is pyroptosis, which comes from the Greek word for fire and for falling. And this is referred to uh, cell death. But pyroptosis is, is different from apoptosis. Pyroptosis is associated with a high inflammatory state um, and frequently occurs upon infection with intracellular pathogens. In pyroptosis, what happens is that water begins flooding the cell, leading to the cell swelling and then membrane rupture. At the same time, the cell will release all these inflammatory cytokines within it that were activated by caspase 1, right? So it's important to know that paraptosis is different to apoptosis in this respect. So what I drew here is a node-like receptor P3 inflammasome that is made up of only two uh, node-like receptor P3 uh, monomers, right? But it, the inflammasome is actually made, is, forms a ring-like structure made up of seven node-like receptors as well as the adapter proteins. Now this inf inflammasome complex will result in the proteolytic cleavage of the pro-caspase 1 uh, leading to caspase 1 as, as indicated by this diagram. So now that we know what this inflammasome does, how does it get activated? As I mentioned, many things activate it, but it's not really understood how exactly, if this makes any sense. So the node-like receptor P3 inflammasome um, is actually formed in response to a diverse, uh, diverse amount of pathogen-associated molecular patterns, as well as danger-associated molecular patterns, and changes in the ion gradient across the cell. So let's have a look at some of these examples. An efflux of potassium can actually activate node-like receptor P3 inflammasome formation. Potassium efflux is, can be induced by bacterial toxins as well as by extracellular ATP, which engages with the potassium channel, causing potassium to go out of the cell, potassium efflux. Pathogen associated molecular patterns or genetic material of pathogens such as these uh, DNA, single stranded RNA, and double stranded RNA can stimulate the activation of node like receptor P3. Engulfed danger associated molecular patterns and pathogen associated molecular patterns, this will form a phagolysosomal ve vessel, and this vessel can rupture and the rupturing of the vessel can induce node-like receptor p3 activation this can be through the release of reactive oxygen species ros the damp danger associated molecular patterns and pathogen associated molecular patterns itself as well as cathepsin b a component of the lysosome A channel formed by type 3 and type 4 bacterial secretion can insert pathogen associated molecular patterns as well as danger associated molecular patterns within the cell, leading to node like receptor P3 activation and subsequent inflammasome formation. Also, the transcription of pro inflammatory cytokines can stimulate node like receptor P3 activation as well. And um, so they're like agonists. So the bottom line is that many pathogen associated molecular patterns and danger associated molecular patterns activate node-like receptors within the cytoplasm, which will lead to the formation of inflammasome and the inflammasome will amplify the immune response as well as lead to cell apoptosis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for watching.